Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Wildlife Vlog. As usual, the songbirds are gorging on berries to store up energy for the winter. And clearly etiquette isn't a factor. Look at all the bits of berries splattered on this robin's beak. These dark-eyed juncos are also busy feeding, looking for berries, seeds, and insects that have survived the cold winter temperatures. Away from hungry birds and freezing temperatures, you would think that insects would be safe indoors. That is not necessarily true. Look at any windowsill in your house, and more than likely, you'll see what looks like an insect graveyard. All sorts of flying insects from fungus gnats to houseflies congregate in these areas. Realizing that food is scarce, they follow the light from these windows to try to make it back outside, but the glass prevents them from escaping. They starve to death at the window's edge. And starvation isn't the only threat, there is a predator on the loose. Believe it or not, our houses are filled with countless spiders only a few millimeters in length, and they're all very hungry. These arachnids inhabit corners and crevices waiting for unwary insects to pass by. Fortunately, these spiders are no real threat to us humans. They actually keep the insect population down in our houses, and if directly encountered, they'll run away rather than biting. Of course, they won't run far. With an ample food supply, these spiders are able to breed. Here's a cocoon that one type of spider forms in which it lays its eggs. When the time is right, these eggs will hatch to start the next generation. Moving back outside, the environment may seem frigid, inhospitable, but life always finds a way. Just look at these bullfrog tadpoles, surviving under a thin layer of ice. This week, the ice became thin enough for me to take a look at how the microscopic world of my pond is dealing with these cold temperatures. At first, this microscopic jungle seems deserted. This algae is frozen in a solid block of ice, the ostracods seem to be gone. Either they've died off, or their young are settled to the bottom in eggs that will hatch in warmer spring weather. Instead, the environment is filled with ciliates. Ciliates are single-celled organisms, and their numbers seem to have risen. Either the ostracods had been feeding on them, or these ciliates just love colder temperatures. Finally, I noticed these purple clumps floating in my pond water. I believe this bacterium is called Rhodosporillum, and Rhodosporillum actually grows in low oxygen conditions, which may make sense since ice has been covering the pond, limiting the amount of oxygen that enters the water. Alright, that's about it for this week. If you guys want to see more cool videos, check out my YouTube channel. Or check out my Instagram if you want to see some cool wildlife pictures. That's about it. See you guys next week.